All right, welcome to Pass the Mic for Friday, April 5th, 2024. We are back after a two-week hiatus. Mike Pihuti here on Zoom. Joining me, Mr. Michael Gervasi. What's up? And if you guys are watching us, now that we're back on Zoom, we have video. We have a special guest, um, Ariana Pate. Welcome. Hi, I'm uh, very excited to be here. All right. Uh, I don't want to give away too much information, but she's a senior, class of 24 at Carlson High School. Her family is often mentioned on the ep- on episodes, <laughs> right? This is no shocker, right? According like, to some people, far too much. Now, let me interrupt <laughs> one second, just ask one question. Have we had a high school student on by themselves? I don't think so. I don't think so. It's always been a uh, tandem, yeah. um, you know, d- um, two guests at once. So this is a first, another first for the uh, Pass the right. Mic show. So you want to do a little bit of a bio- biography or autobiography, you should say, on yourself, uh, uh, and then we'll get into our normal show routine? Yeah. So I am obviously, as just said, I'm a senior at Carlson High School. Um I let me think. I'm I'm an athlete. I do uh, cross country, basketball, and track. And uh, we'll get into it a little bit later. But I was just named uh, class of twenty four valedictorian. Excellent! Congratulations. Yeah, There's many accolades that we're going to get into later. <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll save it. We'll save it for the uh, the education segment. We have been off for two weeks. It was spring break in there. Um, we had something, we were going to do this episode back before spring break. There's some issues that popped up, which I'm sure are going to be discussed later. Before that, our fans, thank you for being patient for all of our fans. So we got to go way back. Uh, do you have feedback uh, from the episode way back that came out on uh, the 15th, the Ides of March? Speaking of the Ides of March, you paid your respects. Yeah, I, yeah, I walked down the steps that Caesar walked down. You uh, fared I'm better a... than he did. You're yes, here. Yes, I did. I am. <laughs> Uh, is that too soon, too, or no? No, the Caesar jokes are fine. Okay, all right. Well, so, um, yeah, did you, you get ahead. feedback on the episode before we get into We do want to talk about your travels, but uh, any feedback from that episode? Jill Berg, I yeah. reached out about the door knocking, right? She's like, basically what we said, right? Like, it's it's annoying and everything, but it's not the end of the world. That just seems like it was so long ago. I am like... Um, it is. Yeah, Elizabeth Pate, you know, you might know her, Ariana. She's... Yeah. Really enjoyed the last episode. Lots of laughs. She kind of commented on that. Um, Max, the sports analogy books are a favorite of his. The first was Season on the Brink. I just read one about the G League, read one about NBA Coach. Uh, so he kind of ta- touched upon some of the authors and the things we talked about in there. Oh, yeah, we, that's right. We were talking about books we had we were going to read. Right, uh, books we were going to write. Yes, right. Uh, Deontay mentioned he appreciated the shout-out, but it's not going to be family-friendly. So, um he, well, again, we 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 won't link to it officially, but we'll we'll hype them up. Yes. Do you want to talk about Evie? No, you can go ahead. I I got two. I got uh, both Max and Miss Torres on my list. So, uh, well, she wants to write two books: one on legends and mythology, exploring the grain of truth, origin, and one collecting interviews on what people think is important in life. That's a really cool idea. Um, she also wanted to mention that she was a. Uh, the trifecta of valedictorians of 2012 were all super involved. Yeah. So uh, uh, Hannah was the class president, the homecoming queen. Nish was all that Nish was. Or if you remember Nishma, she yeah, was. Yeah. Yep. Athletes in- uh, involved in lots of stuff. Yeah. Uh, Rendog commented about uh, William Baldwin, whose little brother blocked him too, and then wanted to refer, he calls a. Uh, Cry, oh, calls we, cry baby um we were talking about being blocked on social media yes uh i'll leave it there i mean there's a few other ones here but i'll leave it there this is yeah and then max mentioned a book that um way back we went to a tampa uh we went on a little road trip to see the tigers play tampa down in lovely um st petersburg and when i was in the airport i noticed a book called everything i eat this guy logged everything he ate for a year and I was I was starting to do my book, and it was me everything I drank for a year, but I soon lost interest in doing okay. that. So Max reminded me that I actually did start that as a book project. Right. It wasn't just alcohol. Like if I had a Diet Pepsi, I'd read a Diet Pepsi, but I stopped doing that. But someone actually wrote a book about that, everything I ate, and it was on the shelf. Um, and, and then Aaron Torres, Aaron Torres mentioned, I have another project that's a little more under wrapped um, that I, I was not, again, I've talked to her a little bit about it. I'm not going to, that's also under wrapped, even more under wrapped than my other one. So you haven't even talked to me about it. I haven't even talked to you about this one. This is like bonus material. 
So she said, why didn't you mention that? And I said, I'm going to, that's, that's the second one under wraps. So um, before we get into our questions, I think we should do, let's, let's just fill people in on these travels, I think, don't you think? Right. Cause it doesn't yeah. really fall into educational origin. The ladies first talk about a senior spring break. Ariana, tell us where you and your family went and maybe some highlights of this trip. Uh, so we went to Dubai for senior spring break and it was amazing. It was one of the most incredible trips I think that you could ever go on. It was super just enriching, like being able to experience um, their culture and their way of life. It was just super interesting. We got to do a lot of cool things. We did some, uh, we did like a desert safari tour and did all these dune buggies and sandboarding. Um and then there was like a performance thing with like a traditional dinner. Um, it was super cool. And then we did the mall. It's like the biggest mall in the world, I think. Um, saw the Burj Khalifa, the tallest building in the world. And uh, I don't know. I mean, it was, it's almost a blur. We did so much. It was like, go, 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 go. But how long of, it was how long of a, super how long of a flight? How long of a flight is that from Detroit? Total, all your travel time. Um, the way there just flight time was about 14 hours and the way back was about 16 I think but I know on the way back our total like travel time like including layovers and whatever was like 21 hours oh my goodness well wow. yeah that was kind of ridiculous <laughs> that is definitely that's de that's definitely not a my senior spring break trip to Daytona Beach all right <laughs> yeah, I went, speaking of which I want to ask that question you know when you and I talked the beginning of your junior year and I, and I'm, I'm in no way, shape, or form by suggesting that my lecture to you had any impact. But <laughs> I, I did like say to you, I think you're gonna, you'd much rather do a trip like the one you went on with your family than, you know, the the standard Daytona that, you know, my my co-host. Well, I, I don't think Daytona's even the standard anymore. But well, no, I'm just saying. So my question would be, what made you? Because you had originally planned to do the traditional senior trip. What made you change your mind? So. My parents had went to, there was like a meeting over, I think it was like maybe at the end of junior year um, about the senior spring break, like with all the parents. And after going to that meeting, they were just kind of like, yeah, this seems lame. Like, you know, we're not going to do it, whatever. And um, so we'd already been to Punta anyway, which is where like most of the seniors go. We'd already been there anyway when I was in maybe fourth grade. So it was really either going to be like Europe or just doing something else. And so we were kind of just, all sitting together and I was only I was kind of like half joking when I suggested Dubai I wasn't even entirely serious but they were like mm, okay and uh yeah it was set in motion okay pretty cool I, uh, yeah again I, I I'm under no illusion but when you left my room that day I remember thinking she's definitely doing the, the <laughs> spring break party trip that the kids so that's cool that's awesome uh, yeah I did not I did not do that as I as I've mentioned before I there's some people that like don't like travel pictures up on Facebook and social media. I'm the opposite. I love being able to watch and see what people do. I don't consider it brag because I, I love travel. I respect travel. So I never think it's that bad. And so this, I didn't go anywhere over the break, which was fine. I was here with my dog and I love seeing all the pictures. I, I looked forward to it. It actually um, was nice. You, I mean, um, you know, your trip, which we'll talk about right now. A lot of people, a lot of my friends were on that trip. I was following along with, uh, I was getting text messages from the Pates, uh, including the, <laughs> the. by the way, the Burger King chicken sandwich, which I researched frequently. In France, of course, it was the long chicken. In Dubai, I believe it was the royal chicken is the, um, what, yeah. the, what yeah, it was the uh, sandwich as it's known. So, all right, Mike, <laughs> you were on the school trip that my wife and son were on, which was Paris, France, Southern France, and then into Italy, which was new for you. New was, for me. Uh, oh, to the homeland. Yeah. Yeah, motherland. My dad still insists. Now I know, circa two thousand, I was an Italian citizen, having never set foot in the country before. My okay. dad still insists that I am. I, I'm suspicious of this. You know, my dad gets. Wait, he this. thinks you're a citizen. You have dual citizenship. He still thinks I have dual citizenship. I, and again, I know I got something in the year two thousand. He claims in twenty ten and twenty twenty we got the same things in the mail. I have not seen these things, um, but he insists. He in fact he called me. <laughs> The day before I left to tell me, you know, you're still a citizen. I don't know what he thought I was going to do with this citizenship while I was there. Maybe but... you're going to leave the country and move and go there. Live. Yeah, I guess. Um, so, yeah, I, it was really neat. Now, I will say my trip started. I took a took a, a, a little trip to the urgent care before, and the doctor informed me immediately that I had shingles. And then when I left, he told me I did not have shingles. 
Uh, but alarm. I hate him. And now I'm more and more convinced that I did. And I still, like, I think it's getting better, but some sort of, I don't know if you could hear I it. I hear that's painful. Yeah. It, but I've heard it's excruciatingly painful, which it wasn't. But uh, a frequent listener of the show who I already mentioned, Deontay, in fact, texted me right as we got on the air to tell me that his wife has it. I talked to him earlier today and her symptoms are almost identical to mine from hip pain that I had. Um, I had a bump behind my ear that I thought was a spider bite that she had on her leg. That's Everything what Rocky thought he had too. Yeah. It's just a weird. Well, not, I don't want to violate HIPAA on people. No, you kind of. Was are. it only on one side of your body? That's why oh, sometimes well, you hear about yes, shingles. Until we got to Europe. And then the only thing that changed was I have, I have a little rash on my left side. But again, the only thing that gives me pause, I'm, I've been, I'm, I'm, I've, in fact, I got through the antibiotics. The thing that gives me pause is I've heard how painful they are and they were painful, but it wasn't like I've heard stabbing, like constant yeah. stabbing. Pain. It wasn't that bad. I yeah. showed your wife who said, maybe. Um, she has I, past experience. Yeah. So it was like, I violated HIPAA again, but um, yes. so yeah, now I have something else. We have a, we have a nurse's kid in the chat. I think that true, true. we're allowed to. Um, yeah. Yeah. So that's where it started. And it was, it was great. I, we had too many people. I, you know, I'm not going to sugarcoat that. There was 105 of us. A small army is very difficult to navigate in any place, let alone a foreign country. So, you know, I had been to Paris. Now I didn't realize, I, I don't know how I didn't realize this, but my, my least favorite moment of all my travels was when uh, a young lady on the tour announced that there were rats in the area we were hanging out and sure enough they were and i am not kidding you when i say i let out a genuine authentic scream of oh god and mike i was like you on this trip i tried to stay behind everybody i was the yeah, man the, the back the back yeah the back the, the the terror alert was heightened so i'm feeling like you know Liam oh, yeah Houston, that's right i did see that everything yes taken watching everybody man when those rats came out i was oh you, god you were you were, you were like costanza i was, people and I was, knocking them into the subway natalia took a picture of me man i was so yeah, it was cool. <laughs> it's just a couple things from from Italy. I got this this neat thing here since we're on a uh, little glass yeah. thing of the Coliseum. Um, oh, nice! I'm a big Caesar fan, so Vene Vidi Vici. Um, nice. And then, I saw uh, you, yeah, you went to the Forum, right? And yeah, and yeah, saw his tomb and yeah, it really was. Uh, it, especially for a person that was a fan of learning about Caesar before, it was really neat when. That was probably when people asked me my moment of the trip. Now I've had a little more time to reflect when she said these are the exact stairs that Caesar stepped down, you know, on the Ides of March. That was that was pretty, pretty powerful. And, it, and again, it gives us reflection that just how young of a country we have. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Every time when I went to Europe, that's what I'd always think of is that we're still babies over we're here. We're still a baby. Absolutely. Well, excellent. Both of those trips sound excellent. Um, Downriver was fine. Um <laughs> I went and watched. Uh, I went to Buffalo Wild Wings and watched some opening day baseball. <laughs> Ken, Sec Ken Secor and Max Bailey would be proud. As we're um, uh, as we're on the air, are the Pirates still unbeaten? Pirates are undefeated as of this recording. So are the Tigers. Well, the Tigers and Tigers aren't playing today, so they could be. I mean, who knows what's going to happen in a doubleheader tomorrow? I, I will yeah, never understand why baseball. You got West Coast teams playing in domes I, right now. And it really I, makes I, no I, I, I I don't understand. I don't understand. Um, all right, so. Time for our, our stock guest questions. All right. Um, it's your birthday, um, Ariana. You can have any meal you want out to eat, uh, cooked at home, homemade. What is that meal going to be? I don't really have like a specific restaurant, but definitely I'm going out for sushi. That oh, is my okay. favorite food. I don't know why I just have taken a liking to it, but I'm definitely going out to some sort of sushi place. Now, before I get to my stock question, is there some, what kind of sushi? Like, what do you like inside of it? I really like the, uh, that shrimp tempura stuff, like the fried little shrimp pieces or whatever. Um, but I'm, I'll really eat anything. I'm not that picky. Okay. Do you, have you tried places around here? Do you go out to Ann Arbor or? I've done, I've done Black Pine Tree. We did actually, and this is nowhere near here, um, last spring break when we were driving back up from Florida. We stopped in Atlanta with my uncle. They had this revolving sushi bar. Oh, the bar thing. Yes. So good. And I know they have some around here that I need to try, okay. but. Well, you're going to have to find a place. There's a good place in Ann Arbor. Chloe took me to. I'm sure you'll, you'll find that. Not to give away yeah. anything. All right, I'll, Mike, I'll, I'll your, your question. All right, Ariana. So you're eating sushi. You can eat sushi with one person. 
Who's that person going to be? I was deciding between a couple people, but I'm going to say Billie Eilish. Um, I'm yeah. assuming you know who she is, the singer. We're not that old. Yeah, just, sing just uh, like Rebel sure. Yell and Moni Moni. Oh, that's Billy Idol. <laughs> I know. No, I know who Billy Idol is. And we're both in the DJ business. I don't know if you're aware of that, too. Yikes. Um, <laughs> I'm going to say Billy Eilish just because she's so young and she's done so much at such a young age and has, you know, all this pressure on her. And I've seen a lot of interviews and stuff talking about how she's her own biggest critic. And I know that that's something that Bryce had talked about in a previous episode and definitely something that resonates with me. So just to be able to kind of uh, get inside her head a little bit in terms of handling that pressure whether it's from other people or just from herself so it's interesting i just i'm actually going to talk about this book when we we get to our uh discussion on travels um i, I just read a book called generations a phenomenal book that really i th i would recommend it to anybody because I, I think the generational divide in our country right now is pretty deep and she was mentioned as, as just having tapped into her music her lyrics specifically it, it tapped into the angst uh that young people feel you know there's a lot of uh you, you know having dealt with COVID, having dealt with everything that she has tapped into and i knew she was much more than just this pop musician that has this this persona about her but i didn't realize how deep it was so that's pretty cool that having read that and you bring her up here <laughs> and i do have a couple of her songs in my playlist i that i in my normal like just chilling out at home including she was the lead song for this last season of true detective Oh, really? It was the, it was the opening uh, theme song to it, which was pretty cool. She did uh, the Barbie song, I thought was... was that's the other one. Yeah. That's the other one that I've listened to. She won an Oscar for that one. Okay. Great song. Great yeah, song. I think she's only won... I think she only needs to win a Tony, and she'll be like the youngest person ever to win the, like, the EGOT The thing. trifecta. Huh. Yeah. All right, well, excellent. Um, our education topic, now that we've got... Oh, no. You okay? So your mic of the week. We're right. gonna give you the mic of the week. I almost skipped over that. You do have a mic from what I hear. <laughs> yes, I do, and I do believe it's a repeat. But my mic. That's of the fine. Week guests, is... <laughs> guests are allowed to do that. <laughs> my mic of the week is Mike Epps. Uh, I know you haven't seen his uh, my favorite movie that he's in. Also, probably the only movie that I actually know that he's in. But uh, he's from Friday, next Friday, and Friday after next. Top Flight Security of the World. Mike How did you know that Mike hadn't seen? <laughs> I've heard it a handful of times on this uh, on this podcast. So do I've you seen, like, I've... let's let's talk Friday for a second. Do you like the Fridays <laughs> after Chris Tucker, or which ones do you like better? I don't know. I mean, the first one is just like classic, and I really nice. do like Chris Tucker. I think Chris Tucker's hilarious, but Friday after next is incredible i don't really care for the second one as much that one's probably my least favorite but i i don't know it's it's a toss-up it depends depends on what i'm feeling so on the plane ride mike i'm sorry i was we're speaking a foreign language to you right now but on the plane ride <laughs> back i was so disappointed i'm sitting there and you know you get movies i didn't have friday natalia's right next to me she did that is one. Oh, movie. you got they they, they, they ripped you off. Yeah, I was so disappointed. Did you have Friday? Did you get Friday the thirteenth? Uh, no, unfortunately, I didn't have that. You now, wouldn't have watched. You wouldn't have watched that. I wouldn't have. Now, here's the thing. <laughs> so, a couple years ago, I did watch Equalizers. I don't know how I did it because I, I, I like I can't. Those are so bloody. But Dave Crampton, one of the, he watched that Equalizer three, and he talked about how bloody it was. And it, according to somebody else on the flight. Um, who had something similar on, a lady asked her to turn it off. Really? Went, I'm watching this, and it, it was that bloody, and so the person, like, covered themselves up with a coat, so... Mind your own right. business. Don't, don't look business. at someone else's screen, what? Yeah, worry about I'm yourself. A, I'm horrified by blood and guts, and I, I, I would never even dream of asking somebody to do that, so... I, I watched the first Equalizer on one of the, uh, the plane trips. I don't even remember which one it was, but I watched one of them while we were flying, the first one. You feel like a pretty tough dude after you watch that, don't you? Like, you can go... Uh... Yeah, I know. I felt, like, sweet. Like, I was, like, the king of everything. Yeah. But I didn't want to... The third one's actually, like, the worst one. That one is the one that came out, like, this summer. That one's not as good. Yeah, sorry. I'm fighting with somebody over here. <laughs> All right. Education-wise, um, we figured this is going to be your time to sort of shine and brag because my questions, because so I'm going to give a little biographical information. And if I miss something, please, she already, Ariana already mentioned that she's a three sport athlete. 
um, was varsity cross country um, four years, um, varsity basketball three years. Am I correct? Yeah. Yeah. Three. So sophomore, junior, senior, varsity track and field four years, um, more than likely uh, yeah, with the assuming. season just starting. Um, so, I mean, that's basically you are year round because we know there's summer yeah. stuff. Uh, there's, you know, once one season ends, there might be a couple days between the next. That's just the way school sports work. And lots of people do three sports. It's 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 a hard thing to do, but a lot of people do it. Um, but you're also, you are a student, a student council member through all four years, an executive board member. You work the blood drive from 10th grade on. You're active in other clubs and groups. Uh, and you obviously took a very rigorous academic schedule. We're not talking about like, you know, basket weaving and... Uh, <laughs> This sort of thing because you're Sorry, valedictorian. Next. You're valedictorian, and you are, you know, you are accepted. Um, co congratulations into the nursing program, right? <laughs> Thank at you. U of Ann yeah. Arbor. Um, so my question to you is: um, A, um, what? Who do you credit for for that drive that you have? I mean, what? I mean, and also ah, time-wise, just how did you do it? How do you do it? Um, for people that are like maybe in eighth grade or ninth grade right now that want to do all these things, but maybe sometimes seem to seem a little overwhelmed because you also had, you know, you're a very social person, very friendly person. Um, you don't go lock yourself in the, in your room when you get home, you know, um, and I know your parents don't do that to you either. Um, <laughs> you, know, you So just, uh, you know, what pushed you to this drive and then how do you manage your time? Okay. Yeah. So in terms of just like my motivation and stuff, um, I mean, no one like forced me to do this. Obviously, it was something that I decided to do myself. And, you know, a lot of that was like brought on by just the teachers that I've had throughout the years, just that have always had confidence in me and um, that have always pushed me to do, you know, better. Like I know in uh, Mr. Gervasi has definitely done a lot of help and just, you know, guiding me into picking classes that might better suit me and you know things like that so I think a lot of it was just realizing that a lot of the teachers and stuff that I've had have had so much confidence in me that that kind of motivated me too. like okay like let's see what I can do um but a lot of it was just myself and it was probably about like right at the end of first semester sophomore year that I realized like okay this is something that I can do because at that time I was in two AP classes. I'd never taken AP classes before. And I ended up in two of them amongst like, you know, advanced English and algebra two, which really kicked my butt. That class was terrible. And, um, you know, it was, it was hard, but I got through first semester with all A's and I'm like, okay, like this is something I can do. And then I started kind of thinking for the next few years of my schedule and that just kind of being valedictorian just kind of became a, a goal of mine. Um, but for a lot of like the time commitment kind of going into the next question it is like I had no time for anything like I'll be I'll be honest my during the school year my social life kind of went out the window especially um junior and like the first half of senior year because it's you know during the fall it's cross-country practice right after school and then you know, go home, shower, you have tons of homework because, you know, you're taking all these advanced classes. So it kind of just doesn't leave you time to do a lot else. Same with basketball. And even basketball is like a weird practice time, like six to eight. So you're just, you just don't have these good windows that you can actually do things. Um, and, you know, track, although, yeah, it gets out at like 430, but then you still just have a ton of stuff to do. And then this fall, actually, I was playing fall ball. So even my Sundays were gone. So it's like cross country, you got practice every single day unless you get lucky and it's like rained out or something um you got these Saturday invitationals and if you're at Jefferson you know you'll be there at you'll be there all day that was dreadful and uh and then I had like Sunday basketball tournaments an hour away so it's like my social life was just kind of gone for the most part like unless we were on like you know Christmas break and I just had time to myself but that's just kind of part of the the sacrifice that you make like you have to know that if you're going to be doing all this and taking all these classes and being involved in all these clubs that that's you know there's got to be some give and take you can't you can't be involved in all this stuff and then still be expecting to hang out with your friends every day like it's just not it's not going to work okay so for me before we go any further ariana i want to i'm sure you remember do you remember the first time that we met that we met like ever yeah 
this is no I, i'm sure <laughs> you've you known you forever <laughs> you have but so i knew oh no i do know i do know okay i do know so i knew ariana's dad and um <laughs> I do know. We were doing a, she was doing a fundraiser. She was in elementary school. And <laughs> I, I, I text her dad. I said, yeah, send her over. I'd never met her before. So she comes over. I said, come on in the house. And Ariana, no. <laughs> what do you mean? No, it's cold outside. Come on in. And she would not come in. And I, that was a test. Yeah. So after that was a test. I, would, I, yeah, that's a good idea that you didn't come <laughs> in. You never met me before. Um, so, I, but I've known you for a while. I, for me, Ariana, to just, like fifth grade. I, I want to, bring up like when I taught you um it, it, it whenever you teach you know by ninth grade I knew you very well uh when you teach people's kids that you know it, it can be awkward and with you it never was and, and I I want to let the listener know you know without mentioning any names we don't want to violate FERPA she <laughs> not only grasped the material very easily almost to the point where as a teacher you sometimes feel bad but you really carried other kids. It was like a, you want, <laughs> and um, you're probably remembering some of it right now as I say it, but it was, you know, and it, it got to the point, I was like, man, she's not responsible. She's not working two people's, you know, or more sometimes. And so I also want to, Mike, you mentioned all that stuff and that, you know, all those things are, are remarkable, but just the person she is, you know, I, I, and trust me, it, this has come out in other avenues. I, I know people that are familiar with the friendship I have with your parents that want to let me know how well you conduct yourself in different circumstances. So I, I, I want to let the listener know that as well. This was not just a personal pursuit of excellence that didn't involve carrying others along. You did a lot. So you should be proud of that as well. <laughs> yeah, I <did. laughs> I definitely remember having to help a certain student with all of their notes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like I, I think, um, you know, and I, I coached Ariana two years in middle school and then I left her eighth grade year um, because the varsity girls job opened up. And I just, if, if I had coached a couple of girls last year that it hit where I coached them for all, you know, th th I called it was probably their most miserable time of their life because they got to <laughs> middle school and then they had to spend four more years with me. But I was that able to coach years. Ariana two years middle school and now four, so six years, which is, you know, a nice feature. I was very fortunate with that. And then I, you know, I actually, when I previously coached across the country as boys, I actually became girls. And let me just tell you a lot of the stuff like you just mentioned, as far as, uh, you know, an athlete and being a leader. And she struggled with some injury things. And, um, you know, you know, because she went, you know, she'd bounce back and forth between and, and, and cross country is brutal on everybody. It, it's very rare to have somebody that runs and every race is a PR after PR after PR. People go through a lot of stuff. And I've had this a lot of times with girls. There's just health issues. There's injury issues. My son dealt with it this year. You know, people don't think about it. And, you know, it's, it's a tough mental sport, obviously. I mean, you're running a 5k. I mean, I, yeah. you know, it's, 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 it's obviously a mental sport and her value, not just for herself, but for the rest of the team. Uh, you know, it's just one of those rare occurrences, those rare people that you have, you know, and speaking of rare, you know, she's an MHSA scholar athlete award winner. That's a very yeah. rare, that's a, you know, that's something we didn't mention in her bio. She was at the ba basketball state finals up in at the Breslin center and was awarded with that. Was that a $2,000, uh, from the yeah, MHSA? Yeah, 2000. Yeah. But I mean, it's ve there's very limited numbers. This is not something that gets thrown around. And I think that is a testament to like what you mentioned, all the stuff she did, you know, you know, at the, at the, at the end of the day, um, eight, three, 11 varsity letters, right? 11 varsity seasons. Um, you know, um, if my math is right, I'm not as good as, and that, math as that sounds correct. <laughs> uh, you know, at the end of a career, that's pretty darn good. Um, and, you know, really, and has been a top performer in these sports for all of those years. You know what I mean? So, um, and I think your comments, and I'm going to tell you this, here's some good news. Um, unless I don't know something that you're planning to compete at U of M in one of these sports, you're probably yeah. going to have more time in Ann Arbor than you had over these past few years. Cause yeah, just the definitely. college, yeah. we've talked about this before the college schedule in general is not as taxing as a normal high school schedule. Yes. You need to study and work more, but I'm talking about the actual allotment of time and you are not going now, you, you know, you can still go to the rec or do pickup games or whatever, but you're, you're at, you're going to be, because you've done so much at the high school level, it's probably going to be a, um, a sense of ease, not ease, but a, a relief 
at the college level, because we've talked about this before, Mike, right? When I got to my first semester at Eastern, I was shocked about how much free time I yeah. went from having. And I wasn't even a three-sport athlete. I was just a one-sport athlete, but I worked and stuff. And then all of a sudden I get up to Eastern and I'm like, holy cow, I got all kinds of time for Sega Genesis, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, so that is one good thing that you have coming up around the corner is that I think your schedule, you know, and there's obviously, you know, Chloe's up there. She writes for a organization. There's other, there's things to fill your time, but I think yeah. that's going to be a nice relief for you. Yeah, definitely. Any other questions, Mike? No, I think so. I mean, you covered it, uh, Ariana. This is, uh, it's got to be, I wonder how your parents are feeling right now. I mean, they're coming down the last two months. Um, oh, man. I've, been there. I've, I've not been there yet. This is, it's got to be a it, world. It's, it, it's flying by, I'll tell you that, as a parent that's done it. They're also, though, in the same boat as me, as they still have another one. I, I okay. fear me next year at this time that yeah. I know my wife and I will be a mess. No offense to the firstborn, obviously, but... <laughs> And that when that last one is going through, then it's sort of like, you know, you look at each other and like how many episodes of Survivor and Amazing Race can you watch, uh, you know, as the house is empty? You know, I, yeah, my, I was, my, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Ariana, you go. No, I was going to say, my dad just asked me, I, it was either like today or yesterday, like, when's your last day of school? And it's like, yeah, it's a little bit over a month away. It was, yeah. I think it was like 31 school days, but that doesn't even count like the PSAT and SATs that I don't have to go yeah. to or like no school on the 17th or whatever. So, little less than 30 days and I'm yeah done. your last day you're probably gonna be at the regional meet uh, there's yeah. sat uh, you know it's sat testing there's ap tests i sort of gave this speech to the kids that i work with in the library once testing hits you know we might as well put a close sign up in the library <laughs> yeah i will be in there um i gotta say too one last thing here regarding homecoming queen i really am gonna have to oh yes we dropped the ball <laughs> yeah so i i've made it known i i think these are antiquated rituals in a lot of ways but you know <laughs> what with ariana winning this year we've had some awesome people win these things in the last I, 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 lot of years so i am going to admit here publicly that i, I was wrong on that there's <laughs> well our, our courts in general have been great kids our school they does have. a great job of nominating a group the 10 the five boys and five girls i've never had an issue um, I think our kids do a good job of picking a well-rounded court. They do. And that's, that. so again, I, I, you know, I, I'm not a fan of popularity contests in general, but this has been, we've just, you know, I, I felt there was a sense of pride on my part. I, I couldn't imagine how your parents felt. I know when Natalia won, it was a ninth grade award last year, but I, I you know, that's, it, it felt good. So I, I am now publicly saying I was wrong. And I yeah. Hope yeah go. Thanks. <laughs> Pass the mic. It's, it's all, been, it's so, so the so it's been declared. Yes. Yes. And I, and I think too, uh, also about the way our, our the way our kids handle it there's no campaigning there's no, no no the kids the when the kid wins the other four are happy for the person mm. I think it's a tempered award and not to take anything away from it it's it's cool and it's nice but I don't think it's like that next week people are walking around carrying Ariana around, around on her shoulders you right. know no. <laughs> and like Jackson Zachary was like pushing people out of the lunch line and getting the you know the fresh pizza or anything that's not how I think sometimes people like overblow what it actually is too. It's fun for that one week, you know, and it's a cool look and not to take anything away from it, it's cool, but it's also not the be all end all. Like yeah. I, I yeah. think the, like, the people that lost weren't crying. Right. They were actually very happy for you. So. Yeah. And I think that's also part of just what happens when you, when the, you know, classes and the schools or whatever pick such a, a good court that no one's really bitter about it. Everyone knows it's just for fun. Like, do you want to win? obviously like not everyone wants to win but it's you know no one's like you said no one's out there crying because they lost no one's out there you know uh, not giving you a hug or something like that and and then a couple days later it's eh, like all right whatever no one cares no one literally yes. no one cares anymore that that monday it's like okay yeah, yeah. you didn't you don't get like a reserved parking spot no. i wish <laughs> like, actually yeah. i have a good parking spot uh-huh. All right, so overrated and underrated. I we when we planned this episode way back, I you guys were both traveling very long flights, so this is where this sort of came in. But it sort of pays in afterwards after your trip too, um, because I get sometimes embarrassed every Sunday when Apple sends me the text with uh, my screen time usage, um, and I've now <laughs> made it a point to lower it. I, I I'm so embarrassed by this. Le- well, of course, this last week I was home alone, so there wasn't. But I want to know overrated, underrated screen time distractions. So this can be sort of anything. It can be phone size, streaming things, whatever. I want to know what you think your overrated screen. So when you sort of want to just zone out, I'm not talking about like watching YouTube videos. Oh, you, you want to look up places that you're going to see in Rome or go to Dubai. I'm talking about you're vegging out. You're doing of nothing of value. 
What is your overrated screen time distraction? I'll start with you, Mike, and then we'll go to our guest. So, man, I got to do this and I don't want to, but I, I t mentioned that book uh, and it, it was going to be something different that I'm noticing in schools, but this, this research that the author wrote about, and you had mentioned another author who came out with a book recently that we're going to get for the professional library. I, I am just using this. I'm going to be that guy, the cautionary tale. And, and I didn't realize that it's a worldwide problem. It's not just the United States. So this is a problem worldwide at just what screen time the damage is doing to the youth. So I'm just going to go the overrated in general with screens. Um, I know that's sort of a cop out, but I can't help but like I, I read it. It was like, I, I got to share this. I got to share this since 2012, especially what it has done to female teens it's alarming. And again, it's, you know, they take out other factors that could, you know, make the, the data skewed. They've gone through everything and it's a worldwide problem. Uh, so I'm going screen time in general, how much it, angst it's causing teens, body image issues, self-esteem issues, so forth and so on. So I'm going screen time in general. Sorry. Right, excellent. I, no, I, you're fine. That's uh, you can do as you want. Uh, Ariana, what do you got? So I was actually, um, that was going to be one of my options, especially going in like the Instagram route with the whole like, uh, you know, toxic media culture with like female, you know, teenagers and stuff. But I am going to go with Netflix. Although I have been recently sucked back into the world of Netflix, uh, my mom's going to be watching this on Friday. So I will admit that I did start watching Grey's Anatomy, even though I swore it off because I just didn't want to. And uh, that's like her favorite show ever. So whatever she'll hear this on Friday and tell me that she told me so but um I just think that Netflix has gotten worse and worse and worse it's there's not a lot of like good new original shows like you know you have your stranger things or stuff like that that'll come out every once in a while that'll be like a hit but I feel like in general like a lot of the Netflix originals as far as I'm aware are not super great anymore it's really kind of only good for watching old shows and then they decide to take the old shows off they took off the office took off Criminal Minds, and uh, then I stopped using Netflix for probably over a year. <laughs> yeah, and I think sometimes I just find myself playing it, and then I play something, and then I, I'm not even watching it. I pick up my phone. I'm sitting on my phone, it. yeah. Yeah. It's funny, because my other one was going to be Netflix, because you mentioned Criminal Minds. That's now on Paramount+. Plus. A lot of shows, so you're right. It's on Hulu, that, too. So, yeah. All right, so my overrated, and this one just baffles my mind. And I don't know, I, I know they do other things on Twitch, like they just it's just a streaming site of some sort, but it all got to <laughs> start, bless you, with people streaming themselves playing video games. So instead yeah. of playing video games, which I have no problem <laughs> with, I was a gamer, I like gaming, but people will sit and watch somebody else playing a video game for hours. Yeah. And I'm like... <laughs> I don't get it. Now, if it was like, oh, I can't beat this level. Let me look up how to beat this level. Okay, I can sort of get that. Back in my day, we had to have, you know, Nintendo Power Magazine to find out like where the hidden mushroom was. But there are people that <laughs> don't even play games and they sit and they just watch someone yeah. game for hours. You know, we laugh at TikTok every once in a while. When I go through my For You page, there's tons of them that pop up. And I'm not talking, they're playing Mike Tyson's Punch-Out on the NES. They're playing Legend of Zelda. They're not playing new stuff. Who's watching these things? I Not me. I swipe right past. Teenagers, class, teenagers are watching. Yeah, a kid in my class told me he was going to do one over break. I don't know if he did it for 22 hours. That was his goal. To watch he, one or game? No, do one. Game well, one. I don't mind. Like, fine. At least the person But who's the, I, But you must have a... Like, who's going to do that unless somebody's watching you? So I don't know the... I don't know, but that's that's my uh, big thing. By the way, the book, you, I want to give a shout out to the book. So the, the book is The Anxious Generation. How the great rewiring of childhood is causing an epidemic of mental illness. Uh, the author is Jonathan Haidt, I believe is how I pronounce it. He was just on, I think, 60 Minutes and the Joe Rogan podcast, and which I'm back Bill, on to now. Bill Maher. And I'm going to get that book. And Bill Maher, yes, he's doing the rounds right now. And he basically writes about, um, he has a four-step plan of how to try to solve this problem, which I'm not going to get into to full details, but I think one of them is no, you know, no smartphones for someone until they're at least uh, 13, I believe it is. Um, no social media until 16. Um, no phones, all schools being phone free. Yeah. But then the last one being, because this is the last part of it, going back to the freedoms that we experienced as far as uh, Generation X of 
letting kids go out and go play and do stuff and not being hovering over them. You know what I mean? That, yeah. that you need to sort of let that. And I don't, they all seem very far fetched. I think that last one, which is not technology based, I think is almost like these, I don't, I don't know if parents could do that nowadays. It's crazy. And uh, you know, the, um, actually the book, I'll plug the book. I it's, it's called generations, the differences between Gen Z millennials and X so forth and so on. Jean M I think it's pronounced Twingy PhD. She mentioned the book as thinking about like, uh, the weird dynamic of how we used to just go out and play and now parents get the cops called on them if they let yeah. their kids go play, that's yes. so oh yeah oh, what a different oh. what a world all right yeah. underrated you have anything underrated for screen time that you're okay i do with? and you know what i'm gonna admit man i get addicted to this i don't know if it's i i don't talk to people as much about this so i don't know if it's not under but to me game pigeon games can be so much fun <laughs> The word hunt games. Uh, I, I just got into the uh, darts. I'm not a big dart player, but man, I love <laughs> darts on there. Uh, and my nieces are very good at these games. And I cannot, especially when I cannot beat her in word hunt. And it's so fun to challenge her. So I'm going with game pigeon. All right. There we go. All right. Ariana, what about you? Those game pigeon games. Those used to be, I remember I used to play those all the time. Um, For my underrated, I, and I know that this, is not the common opinion. I'm going to say TikTok just because a lot of people, like, oh. is there a ton of useless garbage on TikTok? Oh 100%. my God, yes, there is. But, 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 hold on, hold on. But you can also, like, you can learn so much because it's just, it's besides like the trash, you know, videos that come up, it's just regular, for the most part, it's regular people sharing their experiences, you know, now, the people of Down River know what to, to order at the Edsel Ford concession stand, but it's... Yeah, they uh, really care what people have to say, I guess. So. It's, it's regular people sharing their experiences, sharing their tips, and it's been especially helpful in um, a lot of the, the college process. So in, uh, you know, writing your, your essays, they'll, there's, you know, former college advisors on there that'll give you essay writing tips and here's what they're looking for or different scholarships to apply to, or things that you need for your dorm room that you might not think of, or, you know, things like that, where just, it's, it's especially helpful. And yes, there's a lot of garbage on TikTok, but there is a lot of learning opportunity. Okay, serious question for both of you. Uh, you know, I, I take, as an example, we take the Israeli-Palestinian issue. And for, let's say my kids who I've never been exposed to this issue. You know, their exposure would be through, whether it's TikTok, I'm going to use TikTok, uh, and they might ask me questions, which I think is a pretty good thing. However, I guess my question to you guys is, is it damaging that the information people are going to get is just going to be on these platforms that offer nothing, and, and you guys, please correct me if I'm wrong, nothing in nuance. You know, it's just people sharing opinions that now, you know, my seventh grade daughter or somebody could come across and, you know, what do you guys think about that? I, I, I mean, I, you know, oh. I think that, yes, I mean, that's, that's, that's a pretty TikTok problem though. People have been finding their, their, you know, and, and it's about access to information and that's right in my wheelhouse as far as education. And I, I, I see down the line that a, a course, a required course with the, with the way the media has changed, it's just an access to information course, which is a course that I had to take way back for my master's just to sh sort of show because, you know, it, it, you know, it, and it has changed. Like newspapers aren't a thing anymore. That's they're old news. And, and, you know, and, you know, you, stuff that shows up, you know, we've seen this already. People share something right away. You know, whenever, whenever something tragic happens, people want to come with, with their philosophy or theory on it, you know, like the, the recently the boat that you know the freighter that struck the bridge in baltimore i mean there were people that morning trying to right. like come up with their conspiracy theories and and if you're i think the important thing is that if you could just teach in general is that you know, you know the old take a deep breath and wait a few hours wait you know 12 hours and that would be my number one thing and that's why i try to tell my kids you know pump the brakes just pump the brakes and relax but you'd write that that's a fear that i don't know what the solution is I think it's also, well, I think it's also important to remember though, that the, it's all about knowing where you're getting information from. Cause any Joe Schmo can go on there and talk about, 
you know, that he thinks the Illuminati is behind the pyramids or something, but it's, it's important to, to remember where you're getting your information from. Cause a lot of these news channels will have various Instagram and, you know, TikTok and whatever Twitter accounts and stuff that if you're, if you're aware of where your information is coming from and you're being well-rounded in your searches, I, I honestly think that it could be a good thing because you can hear a lot of different opinions and different takes on things all, you know, in one, in one spot that it might be easier to form your own opinions and, and think about things from a more well-rounded perspective. I guess just for me, my concern, and it's not just TikTok. It's certainly not the fault of TikTok. I think TikTok's just taken it to a whole new level. My concern is all those opinions, quite often, I shouldn't say all of them, are really not as informed. Uh, and, and this sure. has been the case. Yeah. With and that's my concern. But again, for me, it was a good thing when my kids are asking me questions. Uh, you know, I don't know a lot, but I, I, I know some, and I like to be able to talk to them about these things as opposed to what they're seeing. And the fact that they're asking questions is a good thing. But I do worry about that. And Mike, you're right. There, there. I don't even know how you conduct a class like that. Like, you know, where are you? I don't know. Because some someone's always going to have their heels dug in and think something's great. But yeah. you know, it, it's you know, like we've said, like sixty minutes is still a very well respected news source. I think even to this day. I hope. I, I got criticized for watching sixty minutes. People think I'm too young to be watching sixty minutes. I'm, I feel that <laughs> makes me feel good. I guess I don't know. Um, my underrated, and this is every morning. I go for my walk make my breakfast. And the first thing I do on my phone after I read some different news sites is the New York Times game suite of connections, Wordle, and then the mini crossword. And each day- I love those so, games. <laughs> so I start with connections, then Wordle, then the mini. But then the next day I'll start with the mini. Wordle is always in the middle. Why? I don't know why I do it. I feel as if doing the mini crosswords, keeping my brain sharp, connections. And, and, and these are hitting pop culture. They the Wordle hit uh, the uh, recent episode of Curb Your Enthusiasm. The other day, connections used emojis instead of words. If you're not familiar with um, it, they basically give you this grid of 16 words, I think. Yeah, 16 words. And you got to put them in groups of four of why they're related. And it's it's tough sometimes. Like, it's tough. Well, then one I the emoji one, I saw a lot of people that put on Twitter. They, they opened it and shut it immediate, immediately. I tried <laughs> it and failed miserably. But- yeah. I think it's underrated because again, I feel as if doing the mini crossword is keeping my brain sharp. Yeah. The wordle is, uh, you know, I, I, you know, that that's something that's right in my wheelhouse. Um, so if you haven't done them, you know, create. An, I I made the mistake of starting just as a guest, and then I when I refresh oh, my I browser, I lost all my stats. So I finally created a free account. So now all my stats are there. But um, and I saw something the other day, the editor for Wordle saying that they're running out of words. They have like so many left oh, and they don't know what they're going to do because it's basically five letters and you got to solve it. So, wow. All right. Hot mic take of the week. We will start with you, Mike. Is that all right? And then we'll go to our guest and mind if I wrap up. Yeah. So Mike, um, you, you said this was okay. Um, yes. So let me before I get to what I was going to talk about with you, I, I watched a movie recently, rewatched a movie from, it's about, that guy makes me feel old, 18 years old now called Click with Adam Sandler. And I'm not a big Adam Sandler comedy movie fan, but this, and this is a comedy, but it's a really thoughtful movie. Rest in peace to the guy that heckled him and Happy Gilmore. Yes. Um, he, uh, and Paul Carter Leathers, uh, who was his. Uh, oh yeah. Happy Gilmore said a rough 24. Yeah. Um, but you know, in the movie, the, the gist of it, what you end up taking from it is the mundane moments in life, you know, you hold on to them, you know, because he gets this remote control and he could skip through those moments, you know, the, the dinner you don't want to be at, the the discussion with your wife you don't want to have, the whatever, and you could just skip through those moments and he ends up skipping through a lot of things because this remote control begins to tap into his emotions. And I watched that, you know, probably a, two and a half weeks ago and then... Mike, the horrible thing to you happened. Um, I don't know if you're going to address this with your hot mic. I don't want to certainly steal any of your thunder on this. Your your dad passed away. Yes. Um, a, a beloved member of the community. And this text you sent me uh, before he had passed, where, you know, that day when things kind of went downhill, I'm so glad I watched the stupid Bill Steelers game with him. You know, that was the last playoff game, obviously, yes. you guys got to watch. And, and it just, all I could think of was, watching that movie 
Um, you know, we all know this, but we know it, we don't live it until it hits us in the face. And so I, you know, I, for me, it made me think, man, my mom, I get on the phone with her and she'll keep me on the phone for 25 minutes and just talk. And I get, yes, and you want to call to in. Yes. And like, you know, I'm sure you're wishing you could have that conversation with your dad right now. So I, I just, I, first off, my condolences, uh, you know, I offered them to you in person. I'm offering them on the show. It, it, your, dad, your dad was such a wonderful person. Every room he was in was better for it. When he left the room, you just, you felt his, his absence. Uh, my condolences to your family, but on the flip side, I, I think it's a lesson for all of us. Your text to me, you know, enjoy that Bill Steelers game or whatever it is you're doing. Um, yep. Cause these moments are fleeting. Well, well, thank you. And by speaking of my dad, shares a birthday with our guest, Ariana, September twelfth, oh, correct? Yeah. My oh. birthday twin. Birthday twin. All right. Hot Mike, do you have something for us this week? Yeah. So I and this is um especially coming off the heels of the Iowa LSU women's basketball game, but pro sports, basketball specifically, are getting kind of lame. This it mainly basketball, like NFL and stuff is still like fun, but NBA is getting kind of lame. Um, um, I just think that, you know, at the high school and college levels, the fans are a lot more into it. You go to a, you know, U of M football game, and that place is packed every single week, you know, with people just screaming their heads off. Or, you know, you, in, in high school, you've got the student sections coming 45 minutes away to Bedford to watch your district game. Um, it's just the environment is a lot better. And then in the high school and the college levels, I just feel like there's a lot more effort. Like in the NBA, I was watching like a Celtics game and it was the most boring game I've ever watched in my life. It was terrible. It was just guys jogging up and down the court, layup, jog back down. All right, whatever. But it's like, this is, this is terrible. Like nothing said, like there should be no reason that guys are going and scoring 70 points every week. Like that just should not happen. That's, that's ridiculous. Um, but going back to like the Iowa LSU game um, of the women's tournament, the women's tournament is gaining a lot more attention. Mm -hmm. And I was talking about it with some of the boys that are my team sports class. I'm the only girl in that class. Um, and we were talking about that game and like a lot of them watched it. A lot of the same boys that would probably, you know, talk trash about the WNBA or whatever, but the, the women's tournament, is gaining a lot more attention. I even heard uh, one of them say that it was better than the men's tournament this year. So that also makes me happy that collegiate women's sports are gaining the attention that they deserve. Awesome take. Uh, I, I just want to, one thing uh, uh, regarding the NBA. <laughs> I think there's too many games. I, I'll, I'll start with that. I think you would feel different if you turned on a random playoff game. I But I think the NBA does have a problem. They sure. mentioned the 70 points. I think you have, and this is, my friends and I always argue this, I think you have a generation of players that are so skilled, you know, to me, like, I, I can watch the Joker play basketball forever, and it's the most beautiful thing. To <laughs> and you have this skill set and this need to, for marketing with offense, but they've taken away so much defensively, and they, they the NBA has to figure, because the scores are getting ridiculous, and uh -huh. <laughs> have to figure out a way to find the balance because I, I think a lot of people are agreeing with you on this, you know, but the game does change in the playoffs. It becomes much more competitive, much more hard fought. But yes. The point is well taken for sure. And um, yeah. I did well, see the playoffs are when it really matters. Right. Right. And I think some of the numbers, the initial numbers that came back for the ratings for that Iowa LSU game is that it beat uh, the NBA most recent NBA mm -hmm. finals the Stanley cup finals, obviously, and world series, no shocker. Well, it's no, no, I don't want to start piling on the NHL and major league baseball, but the NBA, it beating it beating up there right up with the NBA finals numbers. That is pretty shocking. That's uh, am, I, am I misquoting that? I, I no, let me, let I me read you this. No, I, I saw that too. The, um, the 12.3 viewers, the million viewers defeated, um, any women's college basketball game ever, the 2023 NBA Finals, 2023 World Series, 2023 Orange Bowl, 2023 Big Ten Championship, 2023 Cotton Bowl, Pac-12 Championship, Big 12 Championship, ACC Championship, Peach Bowl, Thursday Night Football, every 2023 college football regular season game except Ohio State and Michigan. So, yeah. Yeah, so that, I mean, that, that says a lot. That's great. That's great to see. That's great to see. 
All right, my hot mic take, um, you sort of uh, hinted at it a little bit. So the re we, we, were, we were scheduled to record the week before we left on break, um, uh, the Monday of that week before I brought my father to the hospital. And my father had a long history of heart uh, issues. Um, he's had a stent and bypassed and, um, and was diagnosed with congestive heart failure. I brought him into the hospital with my mother on Monday. By the time Wednesday rolled around, we had sort of the writing was on the wall that his heart just wasn't keeping up. It was, there's nothing that could be done. Um, it was looking, once we had the diagnosis, looking back, it wasn't um, as surprising as it was, I guess, Monday evening. We, there was writing on the wall for the past month. Uh, and it's just something that it's, I mean, it's the human body. The human body can only do so much. And we accepted that as a family. We were all there to say goodbye. Um, so I just wanted to share two things that were the most important thing that, you know, you shared about my me watching games with my dad. The two most important things, um, and I think I've said this before about my dad, is that we do, our, our show is all focused. We joke around about overrated, underrated, and the mics. But our main focus, if you look at the category when we're in education, right? And I think I've said this about my dad before. You know, he has a trade school, he had a trade school degree, he was an airline mechanic, a uh, smartest man I ever knew. Smartest man I ever knew but always downplayed his intelligence because he didn't go to college. Right. And this is why I think both you and I, Mike, we often say that, you know, that doesn't, that's not a reflection of intelligence. My dad would change, my dad changed engines on passenger jets. Okay. <laughs> right. Um, I can't change a garbage disposal. Right. Okay. Right. So right. I was never going to sit there and say that my dad was not intelligent. My mom, these last few days talking, he read all the time. I wrote an article that was published in the news Herald he would read, he was reading novels and my mom, he would keep a dictionary by his side because his vocabulary wasn't the best, but he wanted to know what was going on. And I just have so much respect for that. That, And I want to stress that to every person listening out there, that if you're struggling in an academic class or you're not thinking about going to college, that intelligence is relative. Learn something, learn something, do something. You can be of value and don't ever downplay what your value is. And that's the one of the most important things my dad taught me. The other half of what he taught me, and I spoke about it, is my dad, all the people that reached out to us over the last two weeks, and you mentioned it well, is about lighting up a room, the kindness he displayed to everyone, uh, no matter who you were, he'd smile, he'd wave, say how you're doing. He may not remember who you were. I know a lot of our neighbors and my old ex-students and people would say, I don't think he knew who I was, but he'd always be kind and say hi. He didn't care who you voted for. He didn't care what candidate you had, because this is something that's not existing in this day and age. He didn't care who you voted for. He didn't care um, what team. We went to many Steeler games on the road. And, you know, we talk about, we we let, we sort of look at these games now where there's brawls, right? And fights and I don't want to wear my Steelers gear to Cleveland or whatever. My dad would be the guy talking to the guys in the other jerseys. You know what? This last trip we went to Indianapolis, the the, the awful game. Thank God we went though, like you said. Uh, you know the Colts were beating them, and he was there. We, we weren't. You know he wasn't. When the Steelers scored the touchdown, he wasn't like in your face. He was talking to the Colts fans, and the Colts fans were actually laughing because they're like, "We're just as bad. We're gonna get if we make the playoffs, we're gonna get humiliated too." And it's just that. And again. He did. He wasn't taken advantage of with his kindness. If you were, if he was kind to people and they weren't kind to him, he'd just move on. He wouldn't be confrontational about it. We need more of that in today's society. Um, he's taught me that. I do my best with it, um, it especially in an election year of all years. Um, I, we have way more in common. There's somebody we were talking in the hospital that day that you know, 99% of the people in this world are good. Um, and I think sometimes we are fearful and we try to drop that number in our heads when we see stuff on the news or this or that. But the reality is 99% of the people you interact with are gonna be kind. And he taught me that he's gonna be missed. Uh, I, like you said too, I guess I'll just wrap it up. I'm so thankful that I went and watched that Bill Steelers game, even though uh, Mason Runoff couldn't pull it off. Um, you know, um, he's probably up there smiling now. The Pirates are five and oh, they're, Nate just texted me, they're down right now, but um, I'll miss him. Um, he's a, a great influence on me. Um, he's, I know the Pates were, heartbroken by it um he they told a story about how back when my sister lived next door to them that he'd be out snow blowing their driveway they didn't even know who this guy was just because he lived next door to my <laughs> sister we've had many you saved him from rushing the court at a district basketball game when he when he may have chucked them all you. out there you didn't give me any help but yeah, <laughs> yeah so uh <laughs> he lived a full life he lived a good life he didn't suffer i mean those are the kind of things i guess you have to say to take uh, soft, you know, homogen. And so I love you, dad. I just want to finish with that. So, all right. Major league baseball. I mean, I don't know. Do you want to pick the final four? 
Do you want, is that what we want to do? We're going to pick the final four. I mean, Mike, I, I think we should leave it here. Let's let's let you sure you're all right finish. with that. All right. All right. Well, I, I'll say anyone but Purdue, you know, my feelings on that. So, <laughs> all right, I'll go and see. <laughs> let's, let's pull friends. I just don't like uh, I, I, they, a bunch of crybabies. So, but I appreciate that. that that's uh, Ariana. You were a great guest. Um, uh, thank you so much. This might be one of our longest episodes, by the way. This might be another record for this too. Yeah. So. <laughs> All right. Well, it's good to be back. Thank you guys for listening. And we will be back next week. No more, no more weeks off. Right. We're back for the, yeah, we're back. For the um, and, and, and I think I'm, I'm lining up um, Jaden Payne. His book is published. That's another book I'm going to buy. I want to try to get him out to talk about his uh, a Carlson grad. He was on before with his um, movie, his film, and now he has a published yeah. book that's actually doing quite well. So that's going to be one of the things we're going to try. Yeah. To and I preview, I, we t- I talked about this before uh, a mental health episode with a yep. relative of mine, which will be pretty interesting yep. for people. And we still have Frank Gomez too. We, we, we sort of got a big curveball thrown in everything. We got yeah. people we got, and we still got to get Beck Tall and Fountain in for the retiree I know, special. I know, I know. Sure. Yeah, maybe, yeah. We'll, maybe we'll do that towards the end of the year. All right. Well, great job today, everyone. Thank you. And we will see you guys next week. 